1999, a tiny little independent film called The Blair Witch Project was released. And it went on to be like this smash hit. It made $250 million worldwide. It also got rave reviews. Even from Roger Ebert, he called it an extraordinarily effective horror film. It was actually one of the most successful independent films ever made. Writing on the success, its sequel, Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2, was released just a year later. It was, like, universally hated by every single critic. Someone called it a club-footed vomit launch of teen horror cliches. It was bad. Really bad. And it got us wondering, what are the best and worst sequels of the last 20 years? So anytime you Google search a film, you'll immediately be presented with its Metacritic rating. You have all these movie critics all around the United States, and they all use these different systems to review movies. Metacritic normalizes these rankings on a 1 to 100 scale, putting more weight on critics with more clout. Zachary, my colleague here, was given a data set of 13,000 films from Metacritic and found every movie with a sequel since 1996. That's 532 films total. We wanted to know, like, what are the movies that did really, really, really well the first time around and then just totally tanked the second time around? In other words, the biggest disappointments. That's where films like Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2 comes in. So the original got a score of 81 points. You know, if you don't believe in the Blair Witch, then why the hell did you bother to come? I thought the movie was cool. The sequel got a score of 15 points. That's 66 points less. Or take Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, the first Mandarin language film nominated for Best Picture. It went on to win Best Foreign Language Film. Well, 16 years later, Netflix released a sequel in English. The original got a score of 93. The sequel? So unfortunately, it fared much worse. Um, Too much blazing flame! It got 47. So on the flip side, you have films that did really poorly the first time around and somehow miraculously did better when they were made into a sequel. This is like a really small contingent of all the sequels we looked at. Less than 25 of the 532 films were improvements. Outside of movies like The Dark Knight and Kill Bill Volume 2, most of these movies were tremendously bad to begin with. Like, for instance, Garfield Part 1 got a score of 27. Oh, good boy! See, I knew you could do it if you put your mind to it. It's not that hard to improve on that. Like, Garfield Part 2 got 37, which is still pretty bad. Yeah, not bad on short notice. The worst ones fall into, like, one of three categories. It's either a horror film, a comedy film, or an action film. So I wanted to see... Is that just a bigger indication of what how critics rate those movies? What I did is like I looked at a randomized uh, selection of 200 films from every single genre on Metacritic. And then averaged out the score for each genre. This chart reveals that the genres with the worst sequels also fare pretty badly amongst critics in general. Despite all of this, Hollywood loves making them. So much so that this year alone, an unprecedented 37 sequels will be released. The reason? Money. The average sequel makes eight times the average original release. That's $160 million over the $20 million original. Grown Ups, the Adam Sandler movie, which was rated an abysmal 30 points on Metacritic, received $270 million worldwide. Its sequel, which somehow dropped 11 points, still managed $247 million worldwide. It was a box office hit. Audiences literally had no reason to give Grown Ups 2 a chance, and yet they did. Roger Ebert famously said, no movie executive was fired because he greenlit a sequel, but movie critics despair of sequels as betraying a lack of imagination and originality. If you have any doubt about how true that is, give Grown Ups 2 a whirl. <laughs> oh, oh no! Bonus! <laughs>